Welcome to the module on connecting web services to Microsoft Teams with webhooks and Office 365 connectors. Hi, I'm Andrew Connell. I'm a Microsoft MVP in the area of Microsoft 365 development. I have a lot of experience with SharePoint development, Microsoft Graph, Microsoft Teams, developing add-ins for Microsoft Office, as well as developing applications for Microsoft Identity, including Azure Active Directory. This video is the first in a series of videos on this Microsoft Learning Module. This video is also part of a playlist that includes all the videos that are associated with this module so you can watch them in order. The playlist and all its included videos are associated with a Microsoft Learning Module that includes hands-on lab exercises and additional resources. Check the notes for this video and the associated playlist for more information and where to find the Microsoft Learning Module. Okay, let's get started. Webhooks and connectors are a simple way to connect your web services to channels and teams inside of Microsoft Teams. Outgoing webhooks allow your users to send text messages from a channel to your web services, and connectors allow users to subscribe to receive notifications and messages from your web services. There are two types of connectors available to Microsoft Teams, incoming webhooks and Office 365 connectors. In this module, you're gonna learn about webhooks and connectors and how to implement them in Microsoft Teams channels. Webhooks are a great way for Microsoft Teams to integrate with external apps. A webhook is an HTTP POST request that is sent to a callback URL. And in Microsoft Teams, outgoing webhooks provide a simple way to allow users to send messages to your web service without having to go through the process of creating bots via the Microsoft Bot Framework. In this section, you're gonna learn how to create a web service and register it as an outgoing webhook in the Microsoft Teams client. Webhooks and connectors are a simple way to connect your web services to channels and teams inside of Microsoft Teams. This extensibility option enables you to either respond to a channel message sent to your web service from Microsoft Teams or to send a proactive message to a channel. Let's look at the first approach, responding to a channel message sent from Microsoft Teams, and that's an outgoing webhook. An outgoing webhook allows users to send messages from a channel to your web service. And once configured, your users can at mention your outgoing webhook to have Microsoft Teams send the message to your service. Your service has five seconds to respond to the message and optionally include a text-based message or a card in the response. Outgoing webhooks are manually configured on a per team basis. They aren't included in custom Microsoft Teams apps. The other approach to integrating your app is to send messages proactively to a channel inside of a team. Microsoft Teams supports inbound messages, incoming webhooks, and Office 365 connectors. An incoming webhook is the simplest of the two options, but it requires more work to configure. You manually configure an incoming webhook on a per-channel basis like an outgoing webhook, but it can't be included in a custom Microsoft Teams app. After creating an incoming webhook, Microsoft Teams is gonna display a webhook endpoint URL that your web service can submit an HTTP post to. Like incoming webhooks, Office 365 connectors enable you to proactively send messages to a channel. Connectors can be installed in Microsoft Teams apps and even published to the App Store for broader distribution. Unlike an incoming webhook, the setup process is less of a manual process. When you add a connector to a channel, you're presented with a configuration screen. A developer can use this screen to send the webhook URL and any other configuration information collected in the configuration screen to the web service. Okay, let's focus on outgoing webhooks. Users interact with outgoing webhooks in a similar way as they do with bots. Like a bot, users send a message to an outgoing webhook by at mentioning it. And also like bots, outgoing webhooks can respond to messages sent from Microsoft Teams channels with rich messages that can include cards and images. However, unlike bots, outgoing webhooks are simpler to set up as they don't require registering and configuring the bot via the Microsoft Bot Framework. Let's look at some of the key features of outgoing webhooks. Webhooks are scoped at the team level, and you'll need to go through the setup process for each team that you want to add your outgoing webhook to. Users must also at mention the webhook to receive messages. Responses will appear in the same chain as the original request message and can include any bot framework message content, such as rich text, images, cards, and emojis. And outgoing webhooks can send HTTP post messages to a web service and process the web service's response. They can't access any other APIs though, like retrieve the roster or list of channels in a team. Outgoing webhooks are scoped to the entire team and are visible to all members of the team. And like a bot, 
users are required to at mention the name of the outgoing uh, webhook to invoke it in a channel. Let's look at what the process is for adding outgoing webhooks to Microsoft Teams. The first step is to create a web service that accepts an HTTP post with a JSON payload submitted to it. You're responsible for hosting this web service. From a team, you're going to add an app by selecting the Create Outgoing Webhook link on the channel installed apps page. Microsoft Teams will display a security token after you register the outgoing webhook that your web service will use to validate the messages that it receives that are sent from Microsoft Teams. Messages sent from Microsoft Teams to outgoing webhooks include a hash-based message authentication code, HMAC, in the HTTP request authorization header. The HMAC is generated by hashing the message with a secret key. Your web service should use the HMAC from the received request to authenticate and verify the message that was actually sent from Microsoft Teams. Your web service should use the body of the message to generate the HMAC token using the provided security key that's unique to your outgoing webhook registration. Compare your generated HMAC token to the one included in the request authorization header value. And if they match, you validated that the message was actually sent from Microsoft Teams. The last step in your web service is to respond to Microsoft Teams' request uh, message with a success or a failure. Outgoing webhook messages sent from Microsoft Teams are sent synchronously, so your web service must respond within five seconds. The response from your web service will be added to the same reply chain as the original message, and the reply can be a text string or it can be a rich message that includes an image or a card.